What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Gamescoop. I'm your host, Damon Hadfield. Joining me this week is Brian Altano. Brrap, brrap, Andrew Goldfarb. Hello. And Sam Claiborne. What's up, everybody? We've got a gross show for you this week. We're going to talk about Zelda. A gross show? Uh, well, yes. I said yes. great. I thought We're I finally said doing great. a gross show. <laughs> But it uh, could. But we are going to talk. Hold about, out your hand. We are going to talk about Resident Is it Evil. Eyeballs. So it could. <laughs> it could get a little gross. Okay. We're going to talk about uh, Mario Kart, if you would believe Yay. me. But first, the Nintendo Switch is coming out. <laughs> Bad snap. That was good. That was a good snap. Less yeah. than a month from a now. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? The What do you think the biggest game? Well, let me rephrase. What do you think <laughs> the most important game coming to the Nintendo Switch is? Are you gonna? Is hmm. this just? Is the answer going to be Bomberman? Bomberman R. <laughs> it's got to be Just Dance. I mean, think about how many households right. will... No, I'm kidding. It's Zelda. What the hell are we talking about? <laughs> of course, Zelda. Zelda. Yeah. I feel uh, like there's a trick here. Yeah. Uh, one, of our, one of our friends, Paul in New York, begs to differ. Ooh. Uh, he thinks it could be uh, the recently announced FIFA 18. Oh, yeah. FIFA. Just, I, I FIFA. Do, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I FIFA. do think that FIFA could become the best-selling non-Zelda and Mario game on Switch, but I still think Mario and Zelda are more important. Uh, also, if it draws more people, more than the hardcore Nintendo fans, to the system, I don't know. He, let, let him elaborate. This is Paul in New York. He says, so this morning we got the single most important announcement, in my opinion, for Switch so far. This year's version of FIFA will be coming to Switch. FIFA being the biggest sports franchise in the world, getting a proper Switch version will definitely boost overall interest outside the traditional gaming Nintendo demographic. Are you sure this wasn't a press release? Mario and Zelda <laughs> sell games to gamers and Nintendo fans, but FIFA transcends gamers and the ability to play at portable OMG. What are your thoughts on this announcement and what other franchises do you think could transcend the, the traditional gamer and would help yeah. really spell success for so, the system? Yeah. Here's my thing with FIFA. He's entirely right if, and I don't want to be cynical about it, but if EA is telling the truth about this being a custom built, console quality version of FIFA on the go, then he's right. The thing is, history tells us that's not really what happens with port. I mean, there's a v there are multiple Vita and 3DS versions of FIFA. They're just not console quality experiences. And yeah, like they can slap a number and call it FIFA 18. But if it's a you know essentially a mobile game or a 360 port or something that just has the current roster, that's not going to sell systems. Right. I mean, on the flip side, if it's what they're building it up to be, and if it's really just like playing on PS4, but you can take it on the go, and there's seamless multiplayer, like. Then yeah, it could be huge. It could sell a million. Well, I mean, the pro you said it right there though. But the problem is there can't be seamless multiplayer with a system that isn't always online, right? Sure. And that's sort of based. That's 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 baked into the console versions of FIFA right now. And it's something I think people come to expect from sports games. They turn it on. They're like, I want to connect to a match online, and they do it. And in this scenario, you'd have to be in a, you know a certain area that has a Wi-Fi that's capable of running on the Switch. I know that bringing my 3DS to hotel rooms and even just doing like. Like basic, like connecting to the store to try to download a game. Yeah, How many times yeah. I've been like on a on a work trip or something like that, and I'm getting, a new game's out digitally. I want to download it, um, and I can't. You can't even get into like that. Totally true. Yeah. yeah. So well, it's it's cre like it, it's insane to me that we're a month out and don't even know how that works. Yeah, like we don't know if it's like a laptop where it just says, "Oh, these networks are available and you connect," or if it's like 3DS where you have to have your saved connections and where you just can't pull up a web browser to log yeah, at least in. Defaults to the one you don't want. Yeah. They've they've been like uh, sort of uh, kind of even unusually quiet about all the details going into this thing, and I'm hoping that's because they just want to surprise everybody with a bunch of cool stuff. But I feel like the reality is that they're gonna say, "Oh, and then like here's a bunch of stuff we didn't want to tell you because it's not that great." You're, you're focusing on online play, but what about the ability to play locally? So like I think it's really locally, cool. Anywhere with your Switch. I think that's it's really cool. cool. Yeah. Especially if you can do it. Tiny controllers? Yeah, like if you can do just because you kickstand can do, and two controllers, that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Well, and that game works for in-room multiplayer with one screen. Yeah. Like that's what's unique about FIFA. You can play soccer games, football, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> with two controllers and a TV, and that's what they want to push with Switch, right? They are there enough say, buttons? Like, are they, I think they're going to have a mode where you can play with a little... Wow. Little controller. I mean, yeah. I'd All you. I mean, it's the soccer is the same game as it was on NES. You're like you're passing or you're shooting and you're ch ch switching. Headbutting, yeah. maybe. Maybe the they've added headbutting. stabbing now. It's it's gotten <laughs> it's gotten insane. I mean, it's 2017. Let's yeah, the hockey would work too. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, I get his point though, because I mean, the the global appeal of FIFA is is something that I mean, the, of 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 football in general is something that transcends Zelda, obviously, and the concept of getting games like that on the Switch is huge. Um, I think this is the one that's going to test the waters. So, and I feel like I say this at the start of every Nintendo generation, but if you want to see more stuff like this, buy FIFA. Yeah. Because support this, send the message to EA that they should be porting more games of this magnitude over to the Switch. Um, and this will come out 
presumably day and date with the other versions oh. of FIFA? We, I mean, they haven't said. We assume. Yeah. Like if it comes out later, season. nobody's going to care. Yeah. The, the right? interesting thing yeah. that Nintendo uh, seems to be doing with the Switch is that they have this launch that's primarily Zelda and a couple like little extra things on the side for you know some other games here and there. And then they're trying to sort of keep a steady kind of quiet flow of games going until the end of the year. So I don't know exactly where FIFA's going to fit in there, but we're just we just got um, the Poyo Tetris uh, release date like half an hour ago mm-hmm. like it's it's very odd that we don't know everything right now there's so still so many so many questions about this whole yeah. thing so yeah well, making a custom version of fifa for the switch kind of puts ea in a tough position yeah. because if ea uh spends extra marketing dollars on the switch version that's probably going to piss off sony and microsoft but if then they don't like spend a lot of money marketing it then no one's going to know about it yep. yeah so I, I don't know what they do with that it's situation. a weird boat I, I almost feel like the real test is going to be fifa 19 because i feel like the first year you see kind of the trickling support it's like like ubisoft is there you know they were there that night they announced three games but the games they announced were rayman just dance and steep yeah and they were very notably not you know watchdogs or far cry or anything like there's that there's no zombie U or anything either right? right in terms of like hey we're going yeah. all into this new hardware with an original ip yeah and there are um, rumors that they're making like a rabbit's crossover mario RPG i read i remember thing, reading about that I'd, yeah. I'd be i'd be totally down to check that out you yeah. know i'm surprised that's not something that um they are even beginning to talk about or tease yet and that's so. why like the the launch and, and actually understanding how this stuff works and then e3 i feel like like when come like june 20th or whatever it is when we know what they've announced for the rest of the year when we have a few months of the system under our belt when like we're not kind of blinded by zelda because i feel like right now it's the switch launch but it's really the zelda launch yeah. you know like i'm yeah. i'm as excited for zelda as i am for the hardware itself so i feel like a few months removed from that that's when we'll kind of see Okay, like yeah, we're getting a version of FIFA this year. Are they going to keep it up? Or is it going to be the same version every year with an updated roster? It's interesting too because it usually goes in reverse with consoles, right? You get that last E3 before the fall where the console launches and it has this big push, right, in, in terms of the holiday sales. But this is launching in the spring and then carrying momentum into E3 and then will hopefully carry momentum into the fall where it sort of like has its second or third wind. Yeah. So if they're able to like keep that going with cool stuff, uh, keep the conversation going, keep people interested. I think between. Um, Launch and E3, we get Mario Kart, Splatoon, and Zelda, and plus all the other launch games and the third party stuff. So, um, and like, you know, weird stuff like One Two Switch. So. And like Arms is somewhere in the yeah, yeah. clips. Yeah. Guys, so. we just talked about FIFA for five minutes. <gasps> well, Man, have mostly. you ever done that before? It's because the UK team's <laughs> in the done office. That before? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're all here. That's a good point. I'm uh, impressed. Well, Paul in New York asks, you know, what other franchises could transcend the traditional gamer and uh, help draw people to the Switch? We know it's getting Minecraft. Yeah, that's yep. a huge that's one. That's one of the big games. Uh, if Way there's a Monster Hunter. There. I mean, Monster Hunter is oh, what come made... On, Monster Hunter? I mean, In Japan. the Monster Hunter, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. Monster Hunter is the reason PSP was relevant. Like, And I think that it sold millions and millions of units because of it. It didn't Engine. really do the same thing for 3DS, yeah. but it could. You know, I yeah. think like a really like solid... I mean, if really you're going to go with Japan, game. just say Dragon Quest. I mean, yeah. I mean, if Rockstar can get the PS3 version of GTA V running on this thing. <laughs> well, yeah. I was going to say GTA, but, you know, they tried uh, Chinatown Wars. Yeah, as which a, I love. As a DS exclusive. This, uh, this, it I, could handle Red Dead. It, it should be fine with that. Yeah. Do you but, want that? Do you need Red Dead to be I mean, can handle on the I, Nintendo system? We I mean, don't. But that's kind of like the whole idea. One of the one of the big appeals of the, of the Switch is we're supposed to have that big AAA console experience on the go. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing, like today, uh, there was an interview with uh, the director of Final Fantasy XV who said there was no way they could get that game running on the Switch. So it's like, could rude. Red Dead run on it's it? so rude. Oh, and I like, think he said they haven't tested it. Yeah. Well, there's also... It's ty- more like a... Mm. I think he I said it couldn't run on it. He said maybe know. it can. His quote is that we haven't, we they haven't, haven't tried. tried. Haven't I mean, that's the thing. And like, the, there was a Titanfall quote that said that like laughed the person asking out of the room. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. I think we just don't know. <laughs> but then Miyamoto said it's running Unreal and the teams have been practicing Unreal. Right. So like, I don't... I don't know what that bar is. Like, I feel like I'm I'm just technically ignorant of of how this compares to other consoles and what it can. Well, handle. we also Nintendo got first the... parties are always going to sell the Nintendo system, even yeah. to yeah. casuals, yeah. whatever that is. Well, we also got that quote from the um, lead designer or the creator of For Honor, who was just like, "We haven't even thought about putting yeah. this thing on Switch. It's not even part of their conversation." And obviously, they're focused on the launch of their game, which comes out in what the fourteenth. Yeah, it's out yeah. in a week. So um, obviously, they're they're putting they're putting all their eggs in that basket. But yeah, it's it's a little kind of concerning to just have all these conversations about all these games that aren't really even a thought for people to bring over to Switch. Um, but the last said, system that was successful from Nintendo that had third party support that was just ports mm-hmm. was like. 
what, Super Nintendo? I mean, yeah. Nintendo 64 maybe? Yeah. We had lots of third-party support, but it was for unique Wii games. Yeah. It was for knockoffs of which Wii I Sports. Would, which I'd love to see, right? That's what I would like to see, too. Yeah. Like, the Wii U had a bunch of third-party ports. They launched with it. The yeah. GameCube had great third-party ports. But, yeah. but you're like, back in a, like, nobody a, bought it. You're in a weird, like, chicken and egg scenario there where you're like, they won't support the Nintendo Switch unless they know it's selling really well and third-party games are selling well on it. But people Th- are That's what happened with to, Wii. It's a yeah. weird recipe. And people are hesitant to put their third-party games on it. So why develop a brand-new original game using a pre-existing IP or even a brand-new IP when it's not entirely proven yet? So I think a lot of publishers are saying there's a wait-and-see thing. And Miyamoto's quote about Unreal and other, other systems running on the on the switch is that he predicts that it will take a year from start to finish to basically say we want to put this game on the switch to this is running on a switch and it's in it's in source so that means that if if this thing knocks it out the out the park in march uh by march 2018 we could hypothetically be seeing tons more third-party support but and i I think it's going to be kind of quiet until then like it really does feel like you know this year is a launch period, you know, and like it's yeah. no one like if you look at like PS4 and Xbox, a lot of people transferred from 360 to PS4 that generation. Like people switch sides. Yeah. I don't think that's really what Nintendo goes for. Like I don't think it's a one to one competition in that way, but it it is in just staying relevant. And I think Here's in they could do a good job with retro third party. So if they yeah. got a ton mm. of third parties to say, we're just going to put all these games on your system at once, sure. then you get the NES yeah. Classic effect. Yeah. Where it's like, yep. also, there's all these like available cheat I, I own yeah. almost every vintage Rockstar game on my iPhone mm-hmm. because... They are they're like two two or three bucks. They go on sale all the time. I was playing. I was on a flight back from L.A. I, I spent the entire flight playing Bully on my phone, and I'm like, why isn't this on the Switch? Yeah, like just drag and drop all that stuff. How I does know Bully it's hold as, up? It's it's cool. I mean, it's not. It's on not a GTA phone, that game. That seems so difficult. It's just it works. Like it's honestly like it's not the most. It's mm-hmm. kind of like a kind of rudimentary beat 'em up game. Yeah, you know, with yeah. some mild like, RPG. Like the Warriors elements. was. Right? Yeah, yeah. Even the GTA ports on <laughs> phone. Like GTA three on a phone is like fine yeah like it's, it's not like my ideal way of playing it but it runs well, the, the biggest issue with it is that it doesn't have button inputs and yeah. the switch fixes that um i think they really got to lean into that sort of n64 gamecube era of nostalgia grab a whole bunch of games that were very popular there and and bring them over to switch but that's what's know? so weird about not knowing like for all we know and i don't think it's going to happen but for all we know in three weeks they're going to say hey the entire virtual console library from wii and wii u is available from day one for purchase we don't know a thing and it's like, about virtual they console. haven't said that yet and it's so crazy that you, you know this on the heels of the NES Classic. Like, right, they exactly. They have to leverage that. And like, it's, it's so, somebody well, out there like paid three hundred dollars for yeah. forty or what is it, twenty five classic NES 30, games. You know? Thirty games on that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you have you have ten million Wii U owners out there right now who I imagine a significant portion of bought virtual console games, and they're like, "Do I trade in my system? Do my purchases carry Those over?" Those people like, are so boned. Yeah, they're boned. That's for sure. <laughs> but I mean, you're talking about the uh, like uh, PS3 and Xbox fans, kind of like bringing. That, that their sort of loyalty from system to system. This is a weird issue with Nintendo right now where, like I said, 10 million people bought a Wii U. I feel 13, like... 13, I think. Yeah, 13. I think a, a, a good a good portion of those people probably feel a little burned because yeah. it didn't really pan out. So they're really trying to get people who haven't bought a Nintendo system in a while, plus the, the loyal Nintendo fans like, you know, like everyone here who's yeah. going to get it no matter what. Um, and that's the thing. Like, I have a pre-ordered. I have Zelda coming day one. Like, I, I didn't get one to Switch. I'm... You know, so I was kind of hoping there would be something silly packaged in, like yeah. just something to play on day one other than Zelda. But like, I'm perfectly content playing Zelda for months and months. It seems like it's huge. Yeah. I'm just worried about that window. Like, I'll even wait three months with no games and then get Mario. Like, that's fine. I'll play Mario Kart. Like, there's enough this year to keep me going. I just feel like it's a year from now is really the question mark because that's when you're really talking about like the actual longevity of the system itself. Yeah. Well, speaking of Zelda, our next question comes from Steve from Long Island. Lots of New Yorkers today. I like it. Mm-hmm. And he knows we're all excited for Zelda, but he would like to perform a thought experiment. Ooh. Ooh. Let, him, let him explain. He says, my question this week has to deal with Zelda Breath of the Wild. Taking a step back from the hype and looking at what has been shown of the game, I wonder if this didn't have the Zelda name attached to it, would people still be gushing over it? Has it really shown us anything revolutionary or game-changing? For a Zelda game, it sure has, but in the grand scheme of things, is it really that awe-inspiring? Yeah, um, I think he's completely on to something. I mean, uh, well, there's there's two issues at play here. One is that the last uh, the last Zelda game wasn't that great. 
at Skyward Sword, right? It's got it's got it's got its issues. It's got its pacing problems. Um, the controls obviously being a big problem, which was fixed now time now 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 around. But um, if you look at the fact that this is doing a bunch of brand new stuff for Zelda. It's really, really cool because it's the first time Zelda's done this, and I think Zelda was getting a little stale and a little formulaic. But if you look at this game compared to, I mean, I don't know, like I'm playing Neo right now, and I played Bloodborne a couple years ago. Like, I mean, they have, they, I feel like they took elements of Zelda and brought them into this bigger world with like Souls inspired combat and stuff like that. If you look at stuff like Skyrim, um, every, every open world game now. Uh, does so much more than I think Breath of the Wild will be doing, but what it's doing as a Zelda game is phenomenal. So it's sort of got this handicap going for itself. Yeah, I would agree. I would actually liken it to Resident Evil 7, Yeah, that I don't think is doing a lot new mm-hmm. for horror, but it's new for Resident Evil, and yeah. it works really and it well, works. and it's great, and it's super fun, and I'm yeah. enjoying it. I think what you, you're missing out here is that this, these are the best game developers on Earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nintendo, like... That's what's exciting to me about it is that this team is the team I trust with any game more than anything, and they make Zelda games, and that's what I have faith in. Like just the fact that it is a genre game, an open world game, action game, whatever. What matters is not that it has the Zelda name on it, but it has this development team behind mm-hmm. it. Yeah, and invented it's, by Shigeru Miyamoto. Yeah, it's not even just trust anything more. Like I feel like there are so many. Like yeah, if you play The Witcher, like that is a stunning, gorgeous open world game with so much to do. It's it's almost it feels impossible. Yeah. But when I look at Zelda, like for me, it is the art style. Like it is that like it's gorgeous and like that painterly style. I really really find compelling in a way that even something like Rime, that's more of like a Wind Waker thing. This just pulls me in even more than that yeah and i think it's doing the question we don't know yet is just how populated that world is because right now we see a lot of it being kind of empty like Mm -hmm. that e3 area like you could like there are enemies around and there's stuff to do and little encampments but there's not really like that many points of interest as compared to like if you zoom way out in the map of like fallout or the witcher Mm -hmm. far cry so like that's the the question mark for me and that that for all open world games is what keeps me going in a sandbox like i need a thousand things to do in any second to to really stay immersed in that game for months and months because otherwise we need to get pulled away by 30 other things well i think there's like there's way better games with uh better crafting systems and ba- way better like hunting and way better like minute to minute gameplay almost but no one is going going to do puzzles the way yeah, zelda that's does yeah. no one like dungeons temples the way like the music swells when you get the master sword there are moments in zelda that no one else can touch and they try Every couple of years, it's just like Zelda like game. Even The Witcher had moments where it's kind of like, oh, this is this feels kind of like a Zelda game. Um, but they never reach those those heights. So there is something yeah. unique about this game that isn't like any other open world game, in that it does have um, a sandbox that's manipulatable by physics and fire, yeah, and bow and arrows, and just like like very tactile ways that. So every single inch of it is like you know set up so you can roll a boulder down it and crush stuff. I, I, I like that feeling of it. Um, you don't just go around and kind of RPG it. Mm-hmm. You, you yeah. interact with it, and, and and hopefully like things like that will be really um, delightful to discover. As I, yeah, I'm also just really hoping. 50 hours into this game we're gonna be like oh my god i had no idea this was it. like yep. i mean there was like they're in the cover of game informer this month to. and th- the first sentence i read of that article was about their stables and you stop in in certain places of the world to like rest your horse and it's like almost like an inn in an rpg and never even occurred to me that was a thing you mm-hmm. know and i I'm, I'm just hoping there are more weird surprises like towns and other characters and more voice acting and just little surprising moments that will make it feel much more robust than what yeah. we've even seen well, like that moment in ocarina of time you beat jabu jabu you're yeah. like, I got the three crystals. This is gonna be great. I'm gonna go to the Temple of Time. And then you grow big and you're like, okay, maybe there's gonna be like a cool ending to this game. And then that's when the game starts. Yeah. 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 Like there's no better feeling than that in the upside down castle. Yeah. Yep. And Zelda like totally does that often. The second quest in the first yep. game. Yeah. I yep. love doubling the game size. It's one of my favorite things ever. That's why I'm liking Gravity Rush a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, when I'm into the game. Otherwise, I'm like, oh, more game. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Zelda's really good at this. And yeah. I think they're trying to show us that little plateau so we have so much more to discover. I yeah. really hope they do a second quest in this game. Yeah, yeah that would be that'd awesome. Be cool. I mean, it's funny. It'll like, be, you talk about Zelda like DLC. Game. Mm-hmm. For me, Darksiders 2 was that game where I was like fairly into it, but then you get to a point where it like opens up way more than you thought it would. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. Like, yeah. I don't want to invest another like 50 hours into this. And I think yeah. Zelda, other than maybe Skyward Sword, hasn't given me that like negative feeling of that skyward sword totally did like i i'm just yeah i remember people getting fatigued at skyward sword once he started revisiting places is when i got or the third time you fight that whale boss yeah Mm -hmm. 
All right, next email comes from Tim. He emailed us at the email address. Is he from New York? Gamescoop at IGN.com. He does not reveal his location. He's emailing us from, a, from an undisclosed Tim, location. I hope you're doing well out there in Brooklyn. <laughs> he says, hey, Scoopers, I have played video games for 25 years. And Mario Kart has played a big part of that. The problem I have is that other than, other than a few physics changes, Mario Kart has not changed too much. I think it's about time that Nintendo expands on the Mario Kart franchise and makes Nintendo Kart, bringing a lot of different Nintendo characters to the franchise. The question I have is, what characters would you like to see in said game, and what items could they bring to make it fun and interesting? You want to take this one, Brian? They totally did that. First of I all, mean, do you like that idea? Well, they're kind of they're slowly doing it. Like mm-hmm. Splatoon and Animal Crossing characters Link? are in Deluxe, and then Link was actually in regular Mario Kart 8 as DLC. Yeah. So it's like they're they're there slowly a BMW? getting there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. My I mean, favorite they, Nintendo at, character. At one point, they <laughs> added Mercedes. Rob. They put yeah, Rob the robot in that. I game. guess it's yeah, a question like, of like, like who else could they really left? add, and it would really Kirby? add that much. when they yeah, when Kirby, they they crossed that line with Link. Yeah. I think that was yeah. it. Like, as yeah. soon as they put Link in there with, like, a Zelda cart, I was like, oh, this is Nintendo cart well, now. And, yeah. and that's dude, this thing. Mario Kart 8 is going to be that. I They're, think that's really cool. The other Nintendo franchises are so interesting because, like, Kirby and Zelda are their own thing. But, like, like I'm playing Yoshi's Willy World on 3DS, and, like, I keep running into, like, They Koopas. could add Poochie. Mm-hmm. They could add Poochie. <laughs> but it's, like, in those games, you run into, like, Koopas, and you run into, like, you're like, oh, this is an extension of the Mario universe. Yeah. And, like, Donkey Kong sort of the same way. Like, Donkey Kong Country is Yoshi should thing. be a surprise that it's an extension of the Mario universe. No, no, but that's what I'm saying, is that, like, Donkey Kong and Yoshi are already sort of peripherally connected. So Zelda, I agree with you, was, that like... That was a big step. That's a huge step to the side. So I don't know, like, you get to that point where it's, like, do they add, like, Sonic... Did they, did they just do the Smash Brothers well, thing where like you add, the, like, the Snake? Pro- the, you, like, the, the problem is, like, when you play Smash Brothers, every one of those characters is fundamentally different, and they bring their own charm and their own flair and their own style. And, like, there are, there's characters that, like, I play as because I like those characters in the real world, and there are characters I wouldn't play at as, as Mario Kart because it's like, oh, he's a heavy character in this game, and I hate using those. I yeah. use, like, using, like, middleweights and lightweights. Or they're not <laughs> different at all. They, they're not they, different they at just, all. They're just three different classes. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a cosmetic shift. Um, that's why everything's been downhill since Double Dash. Yeah. The power Powers and Double Dash were super, super cool. Well, they brought and back made each character individual. Did you see in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe they're bringing back the two, the I saw that, two yeah. items per cart thing? Yeah, yeah. which is. I mean, it's it's weird because I'm. I guess I'm in the minority. I didn't realize people felt this way. Seven and eight totally revived my interest in Mario. Oh, I'm, I'm the same like, way. Especially yeah. eight for I me. Like yeah, them, but yeah. I just like the idea of having unique characters. And if there's some bad ones and some good ones, then you fight with them. Yeah, fight for yeah. them. Yeah, I I think the like I'm I'm a little irked about. Eight deluxe, honestly, because I I feel like the big hook to bring that game back and to get me to rebuy it for sixty dollars instead of just like giving me it for free as an HD upgrade the way like Sony would, yeah. is that they added battle mode, which should have been there from the jump. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, it really does. That's a bummer. The problem it's is like, like it's like they, your power goes out and they're, and they're like, well, twenty bucks and your power will go back on. You're like, it should have been on the whole time. Like it, it feels like an it, it it is. It's like it's it's not great for people who did buy a Wii U, but I, it's just like I get why they did it because yeah. the thirteen million people who owned a Wii U who didn't even all own Mario Kart as opposed to the 53 million people who own PS4s and could potentially buy a Nintendo system for the first time in a few years, like it's more for them than for the people who owned it. But what sucks there is that, yeah, you're stuck buying it for a second time. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Everybody, 90% of the people who just bought it will buy it again because they're loyal Nintendo fans. I mean, I'm gonna. So I want my, I want my JPEG certificate <laughs> of, of uh, friendship or ambassador. loyalty, my ambassador thing that they sent me on 3DS. When I bought a 3DS early, and then uh, six months later, they're like, sorry, we, we dropped the price. Here's some old games. <laughs> oh, that's all I want, just a little ambassador. Great. I yeah. still have those yeah, Metroid games. Fusion out of that. Yeah. You still have that ambassador? Yeah, I That's keep it on my home menu. The little really? ambassador. You can't even yeah. do anything with it. <laughs> <laughs> you just click it, and it's like here you it go. Plays, it plays music. It yeah. has like a ninety-second jingle that it plays. Yeah. I fall asleep every night listening to that. Song. You know what's really funny when you load that up? <laughs> can't uh, sleep without it. <laughs> it says it actually says like stay tuned for more information about the ambassador. Oh no! And it's, it never it never comes. Is it? It would be funny if it said <laughs> it like if you street pass with me. It's like most recently played game ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than like what system settings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I always that. laugh when I see that. Yeah. Uh, okay, today we found out that uh, when E3 opens its doors in June this summer, they will be welcoming in 15,000 consumers Yeah, uh, this year. They're allowing consumers to just buy Golden tickets. tickets. Buy yeah. tickets. They're a little pricey. Yeah. $250 for a regular ticket. So for Other the first industry shows are really expensive. Like GDC is $1,000. Yeah, bucks. that's true. But I mean, that's... Well, so that's industry. Yeah. But I, I see compared to like PAX, though, compared to a PAX, definitely like twice yeah. expensive. Mm-hmm. I guess even I'm like, just saying that even I was like, thinking of the panels and stuff like that. Even like Comic-Con, yeah. I don't think is that much. Is that well, right? And so it's if you buy one of the first thousand... Um, you get it's 150 bucks, yep. and then for the other 14,000, it's 250. 
But it's you, not. You guys think those will sell out within the first? Month? I, I, oh, think, yeah. I think it's going to be a bloodbath. Yeah, be I think they'll be gone. I, I would. I it's, all I ever want to do in my life was go to E3. Yep. The interesting like, thing I was is, so like, excited mm-hmm. when E3 existed. Same, one hundred percent. I went in high school. Like yeah. I went in college. Like it's I, I'm here because of it. Like it yeah. meant a lot to me. Totally. But like it's interesting because last year they did. So they did E for all years and years ago, which kind of didn't work. So I don't even remember really what that was. Yeah. It was sort of a. I wasn't working in the industry at the time. I think a, I. I don't super recall either but i believe the idea was just sort of a hybrid of what they're doing this year with what they did last year which was sort of just making it more of a big public facing event and so what they did last year was called e3 live and that twenty thousand people went to it was free and it was just like a big kind of seemed like a mess it was just a big next door to the convention center at la live and just a big open outdoor area and they built like a 70 foot tall concert stage and they had like a a titanfall robot yeah and they had like a few kiosks for games but it didn't seem Organized. I think Mix Master Mike played a show there. Really? Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, how did I miss that? Seventy feet above the crowd, but like this year, it's uh, yeah. you go to the show itself, the show floor yeah. where all the boots are. Um, they haven't said press conferences or anything, but you'll be like in the big public areas where, or the big um, open areas, I should say, where like people build the big extravagant boots and where you can play games. And then they're doing some kind of companion thing uh, with like what sounds like panels, which sounds like Jeff Keighley talking to industry personalities and and making it an E three branded thing. Okay, that's kind of like the big picture of what this is, I guess. So I think this is awesome news for people who want to go to E three. E three is a blast. Um, my my holdup is that there are, it's already like the the Zelda lines last year for people in the press and people in the industry were like two hours. So I can't even imagine. I think they sold sold out. They gave away all of their passes okay. before the show floor opened some days, or in the first five minutes. Yeah, because like we have we, so we have exhibitor badges. Yeah, yeah. Like we can Crazy. go in early, and I remember coming in, you know, at whatever, 9.30 before the show floor opens at 10, and the line was already at the point where it said it was going to be two and, hours And we're long. not saying we're worried about the lines being long for us. We're, no, we're no, saying, no, not for you. Yeah, we're just you're guys. thinking yeah. about going D3, be aware that I've had to wait in line. Like, yeah. the lines are insane. Yeah. Like, some people probably yeah. go for three days and play Six games total. Yep. Because yeah. Because that's yeah. how long. But that's like played. to be fair. Pax is like that too. Now. Yep. Yep. Ah, yeah. okay. If you've I, been to a Pax, you might be used, you'd be ready for that. That's the thing. Like I, I think it's always interesting seeing what you prioritize because, like, when I w- would go to these shows as fans, if I went to Pax, I would think of it as like. Okay, I'm going to get to play two games today, like realistically. Okay, yeah. If I wait in line here, this game comes out in a month. Mm-hmm. If I wait in line here, that game's not out until next year. Right. So I'm, like, and that's kind of how I would prioritize it. So I don't know. Like For me, when given that choice, even, even for us, if mm-hmm. I can only play a finite number of games... I try and go for the ones that are the furthest away. Yeah, and I mean, you, look, you, like, you tell a gamer like you can play a game in a year... And he'll want to play it today. Yeah, you know, like there's something really special about that. Yep. But I think like I mean I grew up looking at Nintendo Powers and EGMs had pictures of E3 and I'm like that looks like the coolest thing in the world. And I go every year and I still think it's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, I it, absolutely it's love it. It's Disneyland level yeah. builds yes. for the exhibit. So it's there's so like cool. castles and cities and just mm-hmm. awesome stuff. I mean the Nintendo booth last year I'm sure everybody's seen. Yeah, all the booths are like that. They're all crazy. Some of them are like just so over the top. Like Disney would do like an outdoor. Um, patio. Yeah, yeah. there's like gazebos and trees and streetlights. Did you, see, did you see what 2K did for uh, Mafia last yeah, they year? They built like the French they, Quarter. Basically, they built the French Quarter. Yeah, like, they built like yep. this two blocks. And street. I think this yeah. will encourage it to be even more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what's so cool. I I think uh, it's sort of like I think opening the public is awesome because it's it almost feels wasted to do that mm-hmm. for a bunch of stuffy dudes in business suits. Like, yeah, I I love the idea of bringing the energy of a PAX or a PSX to E3 because E3 for me is christmas like mm-hmm. it's when yeah. like you get to psx you get to pax and there are a lot of things that have been announced that we're getting a second look at or a first hands-on of a game we've known about for six months but e3 is unique in that like almost every game there is something that we didn't know existed until we got to the show yeah which is so cool like that's such sure. a cool feeling and i'm excited that fifteen thousand people get to feel that and see that the well, the interesting thing is that e3 was a public show for a while and then it went quiet and went private and and then moved around and then it's basically just been industry only but the amount in the amount of time in those years between when it was open to the public and to now when it's reopened to the public uh hundreds of different trade shows have popped up all over the world so if you can't make it to e3 chances are there's a pax near you or there's a yeah, comic-con doesn't or games paris games, games we... always have like the same stuff yeah from e3 so yeah, a lot of people take their yeah. like, sometimes they move the booth yeah they move yeah. their stuff yeah. from place to place I mean, over there. you won't yeah, get to crazy. see the exact layout that nintendo had for the zelda booth at e3 but they're taking parts of it and they're moving it all over the place so i think that's really cool like um i mean we got an invite there was a i got a my nintendo invite that's set up to my like personal account mm-hmm. to play 
place the Switch in San Francisco at the end of the month because they're doing some sort of national tour thing. Um, we got to play Nintendo Switch at this like Zelda puzzle room thing last week. Like these opportunities pop up all over the place now. It's not just like even Best Buys during E3 have yeah. had new Nintendo games for the it's, last couple. It's kind of cool where it's like it's not E3 is that mecca, but there are tiny little versions of it all over the throughout the year. So yeah, and I think it's it's funny because like so E3 had about fifty thousand people last year, so this theoretically makes sixty five thousand or so, which is still about the same size or even smaller than a PAX. Yeah. So it's like, this is still going to be a pretty case, small, really? yeah. like a okay. PAX I think is like maybe five, 10,000 more than that. Yeah. But I mean, it's a limited amount, like yeah. Gamescom is 350,000 people. It's insane. Like that's untouchable. I BGS think this is like 125,000. Yeah, exactly. So this will still feel fairly intimate. So I, it's like, I feel like E3 has been kind of dwindling, not, not in people attendance, but a uh, publisher attendance. Yeah. I mean, I, oh, yeah. I know it has, too, because we report on that, but there's ends of the halls, which are just kind of sad and empty. Yeah, now. army yeah, recruitment. I was never like that before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, I hope stuff like this can make E3 kind of fill out again. Yeah, well, I agree. It's you know, times have certainly changed since E3 started. When E3 started in 1995, the mm -hmm. purpose of that show was to sell games to retailers, to get retailers to yeah. order games for the holiday season, and then they would also let the press in to inform their readers about what's coming out. But me, an EGM reader, wouldn't find out that information for months later yeah. until that issue was published. Yeah. So it was all about uh, courting those retailers. Nintendo had a Virtual Boy booth at the first E3. Yep. But like last year, last uh, holiday season, 60% of EA's business was digital. Yep. So it was like there, that, that need to sell games to retailers is... Uh, not as important as and we've seen those yeah. retailer guys at E3 before, and it's it's strange. It's just like a guy in a, like a nice business suit, and he's tall yeah, and they're handsome. taking all these meetings, and he's walking and he's like, "I think that Skyrim is going to be big because that dragon is big," well, and you're like, "Oh, and all that's right, what the math <laughs> the GameStop manager show is that." Yep. It's, it's a stage presence, and then there's these things called classrooms, which are like these little tiny rooms where you sit down and make like a, essentially a little. It's, it feels like a like a cocoa presentation that you would do to like a small group where you're just like, "Hey, everybody, here's what our game is," and you have like yep. your ten minute thing. Coco um, is our internal content conference that mm -hmm. we, we've had in the past where we brainstormed what we, what we wanted to do. Let, so, a roadmap wait, for the Wait, they year. don't have Coco? So yeah, sorry. <laughs> Why don't we call it ConCon? <laughs> I like ConCon. Cuckoo for Coco. Uh, I think this is a cool opportunity that, you know, like that stuff's to the side where E3, this kind of lets it reshape what it is. Because I think like the retailer yeah. stuff isn't as relevant as it was, and there's separate conferences for that now. I think the press still gets to go, but this lets it become a whole different event and maybe that will bring back like ea has their own event now they have ea play activision doesn't do a booth disney before they stopped making games they pulled out of having a booth like we're seeing fewer publishers go maybe this brings them back yeah maybe this makes it so that e3 is the one-stop shop again for a little bit of everyone i hope so because otherwise you're spending 250 bucks to go see a ghost town yeah you know like i hope it gets filled out i we'll hope they pack to the walls we yeah, will so we quick tips for any of our uh, viewers listeners that do get tickets uh the door, the show floor is open two and a half days, basically. The first day opens at noon, and people line up right outside the doors early in the morning. So you want to get there early, so you can get in. Yeah, you know, definitely get there early. Early birds will get bring you know, a, first place. Bring in a line. parasol because it's sunny in LA. Yeah, yep. uh, and if you're in, our booth is in the West Hall. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. West Hall. Yep. Right as you walk in the That's front door. That's the good hall. Mm -hmm. Right That's as you walk good in the front door. The good hall. On your left is the iGym booth. It's the same hall as Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. Yeah, yeah we're all kind of right in between those. It's a it's a great location. Yeah. We love being there to yeah. be able to yep. see all this stuff. It's so good. I love that. Come by and say hi. We'll be doing the IGN live. Our show carpet yeah. is really comfortable. Yep. Your feet are gonna hurt after walking around yeah. E3. And a lot of the booths have this nice padding and then a carpet. It's so nice. I to love walk in there when you Sony's really come out good of our at that booth. Too. The last couple of years when you've come out of our booth, you, you turn your head right and there's this hallway between Sony and Microsoft that's like blue on one side, green on it's the other. It's so cool. It's yeah, great yeah. for photos. Yeah, it's yeah. really really cool. I have spot. another tip. Don't use the bathrooms by our booth because those are insane. Mm -hmm. Go upstairs. Actually, you can go, the ones you know, right by our booth. Lots of other ones. I don't think are that bad because there's like. 20, there's like 20 stalls in there. That yeah, it's a huge bathroom. But you go to the, like, if you just go behind the scenes, you, think, which you can walk anywhere in this giant convention center, there's, like, giant restrooms with nobody in them. It's the, really yeah. scary. The pro tip is go outside, walk to the JW Marriott, go there, and then get yourself some Starbucks and walk back to the convention center. Yeah. I thought you were just going to go, like, go outside and just pee wherever you want. <laughs> it's downtown L.A. You can get away with that. There's no cops. It's, I mean, that's probably true. That's another thing if you're going to stay in L.A., um, Stay maybe in the numbered streets right near the convention center. Yeah. It's a really, yeah. really convenient place. There's lots of Airbnbs there. There yep. was that year. Don't uh, stay I, in Skid Row. It was probably uh, uh, 2008, maybe. Yeah. The year uh, we just saw a naked dude just walking down the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just yes. having a good day. Yeah, there's some rough areas. And today, Marty's a senior right editor. <laughs> 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 also, a uh, little Tokyo. It's right downtown, uh, yeah, too. That's true. So yep. you can stay in, in a cool uh, Japanese hotel and uh, go to E3. Yep.
All right, it's time to talk about what we've been playing. Who would like to begin Ooh, and share start. what they've been playing? Yes, Brian. Uh, I'm playing Neo, which yeah. I adore. Out, out yeah. yesterday now. Yep. Um, it's uh, So I didn't get super into the last Souls game, even though I got really hooked by Bloodborne. I think it just felt, it was just a little too slow for me and a very a little too sort of methodical, um, whereas Neo feels a lot more Like the actual based. combat? Yeah, the actual. You're like rolling slowly yep, all the time? Yep. I felt the same way. Yeah, it's just a little, like I love it, and I love the aesthetic. I love the art direction. I love the challenge. I think the bosses are gorgeous. Like All that stuff is so cool. Actually playing it is, it was just a little too slow for me. It was like listening to like a record that like just, with a few RPMs lower than it should be. Uh, and Neo is a totally different story. It feels like a Samurai Bloodborne, like turned up to 12. It's much faster paced. When you die, the you're back in the game in like a second. Like the low teams are, cool. are just like, it's not like Bloodborne where you're sitting there for two minutes. I noticed it was chapter based instead of like an open world. Yeah, yeah. You can go back and play You can go chapters. back and grind and stuff like that, which is really cool. And I find myself just playing it for like, like half hour here and there, forty minutes here and there, and just leveling up, and then making my way to a boss, and then fighting him, and then like you know going well, back. That's into more it again. casual than Dark Souls, where you have to like plan out your route, yeah, and, like not screw up on the way. And, yeah, like, I kind yeah. of love those moments in Bloodborne when you're like running to get away from something. It's you know, so like, fun. Yeah, yeah. I I had that this morning. I had I I walked through this doorway in Neo, and there was this guy standing there. Uh, a good thing to do in that game is like a character will have their back turned. You can sneak up on them, hit them with the heavy attack and then light attack combo, and basically like one hit them uh and i couldn't see to my left and right and i snuck up on this guy and i heard just heard five like japanese soldier guys like huh <laughs> and then they just start chasing me and i was like ah and i'm running there's like six guys chasing me at the same time i'm trying to lose them jump off a of cliffs turn around hit one in the head and then keep running come back um it's a great game because you, you know bloodborne it. did that make this like very like did you adapt right away because I think it's so, that yeah. type of game? Totally, totally. And I had I had a I, I I talked about it on Beyond, but I had this whole learning curve with Bloodborne where I was like, I hate this game. I'm not touching it. Why do they make games like this? And then I beat that first boss and I was like, oh my God, I totally get it. Like yeah. I've I feel so accomplished right now. Like it's it's unlike anything else. So I'm glad that this is sort of becoming a genre. I'm so sad I didn't beat Bloodborne because that feeling really is incredible. Like that that first time you beat a boss, or even like the the second one, the father the Siglione or whatever. Yeah. Like that one, it was like, I was like, oh, like I'm like learning and I'm getting better. And it's like, you, you know feel what's, encouraged. What's funny is on Sunday afternoon, I re downloaded Bloodborne with the intent to start the game from scratch. And then I read Chloe Rad's Neo review. And I was like, oh, I'll just do this instead. Yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome. I, I think it looks cool. I want to check it out. Uh, but I, the, none of the Souls games or Bloodborne appealed to me. So mm. I don't know. We'll see. It's uh, it's funny even playing Neo because I'm playing uh, actually a really similar game called uh, Pucci and you know, yeah. and Pucci's Woolly World. Yeah, uh, which I'm Souls -like totally in love with. Uh, I I liked I played the Wii U one. I don't think I ever actually beat it. Weirdly, um, I don't remember why. I think I stopped. Do you want to play I, through all that again? Because it's so I don't know. Like it's my per, like those 3DS platformers, which are admittedly not the best games in the world, but like uh, Yoshi's New Story, Kirby Trip of Deluxe, Planet Robobot, this like. All the new Super Mario Brothers games are just this weird niche of just comfort food for me. Like, yeah. I just can't. There's nothing that's more relaxing to me than sitting and playing through them. And for Yoshi, like, I'm trying to beat, trying to 100% every level before I keep going. And, like, I forgot how hard some of those special levels God. are. It gets, like, really hard to get everything. But, but I know, you get I'm, to, like, watch, like, TV in the background or something. Or exactly. watch a movie or something. That's I, what I'm I, doing. I enjoy that, too. Like, just a sort of hard, sort of casual platforming game that you can kind of play while paying attention. Like, I have so. Bloodline or The Crown or whatever random yep. Netflix thing on behind me while I play it. Yeah, it's super fun. That game's very charming. Cool. But you're also playing Fire Emblem Heroes. I am playing Fire Emblem Heroes, yeah. yeah. So are we all playing Fire Emblem Heroes? Didn't grab me. I'm, it's funny I love because it. really, like, I love yeah. it. Wow, Are you I, really, I, I like it a lot too. I really do. I like Fire Emblem a lot, but this one is like this bubblegum version of it, yeah. which doesn't really. If I, it's just enough for me each time. Yeah. I don't know. I have a there's really no good investment. team. I like a lot, mm -hmm. and yeah, there's no. Good. You get to this point where like I, I can sit there like literally while I'm waiting for anything, I can play a match and put my phone down and you know whatever my coffee's done being made or whatever it is. Whereas like. In Awakening or in Fates, like to get into a battle is a real time investment. Right, like, you, you lose time. You know, twenty minutes into the battle, a character, and mm -hmm. you're, I mean, yeah. I love those games. I'm, no, I, me too. But this is just a nice change of pace. Maybe I, don't know, I, I really like the, the also. I, I was I was playing like online people yesterday, which is not live. <laughs> Have you done that at all? Yeah, it's just, just hard. You just play their teams, and it's really cool to see what other people rolled and what teams mm -hmm. they. Have I really don't want to spend money in it, but I can see where all the hooks are. Like, I keep running out of, like, uh, dual swords, and I keep running out of, like, mm -hmm. the orbs, and I can I can totally see 
like they have a really smart monetization hook for this because you just want more characters. Like like there's a million things you can like try and achieve in the game, but like getting that perfect team, getting those five star characters, especially if you're a Fire Emblem fan and like get the ones you want from the games you like is super compelling and like it gives me a lot of hope for what Animal Crossing will be whenever they do that. Well, I'm and I'm having so much fun with the free game that it gives me even more hope about Animal Crossing. Right. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is a solid good free game. Yeah. Man, how cool is it? Maybe I'll give it a second chance. You guys are really selling me well, on it. Well, it's just between like Mario just, Run. Yeah, play it for like, an hour. You'll you'll it, it'll like, production you values are really impressive. Yeah. yeah. Like, the the art, it's awesome. They sourced a lot of like really cool like anime artists and um, I love the art. I love the chibi characters and the full screen art that yeah. you bring up too. I Man think, singing Fire Emblem is really funny. I think you can obviously spend money on Mario Run and spend 10 bucks to get the levels, but I do think it's really cool that in the last three months we've gotten, if you don't want to spend a single cent, you can play a bunch of new Mario levels and then put it away and do Toad Rally or whatever, and you can play a full Fire Emblem game, essentially. It's abbreviated, but yeah. I think it's really cool that Nintendo has just put this stuff out for basically free if you want to be. I'm impressed. It's Pokemon Go, awesome. Yeah, uh, so I'm playing, I play that, and then I beat Gravity Rush 2, which I can't recommend more. Like, I love that game. I think I talked about it on a previous game scoop. Um, the post game and that was really cool. There's like an origin story for the character. It's just one of my favorite, most unique games I've played in a really long time. But also playing RE7. You can yep. talk about that oh, one, cool. Damon. Yeah. No, Sam and I are both playing Resident Evil 7. Altano's beating it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. Are you played it at all? I haven't even started yet. Well, are, you, are you afraid? I'm, I'm too afraid. Yeah. No, I, there's some scary part. It was raining the last couple of days. Yeah, I mean, I've been raining, playing yeah, at yeah. night. My wife's been uh, at like, you know, like her orchestra rehearsal and like stuff like that. I'm just playing there alone. There's like a, my cat's making bangs inside the house. I'm like, ah, making bangs. It's just Is that right. What you guys call it. Uh, it actually, it, it, it actually didn't. He has nobody to make bangs with. He doesn't have, he doesn't even have the material to make bangs with. <laughs> But he does knock stuff off things, yeah, which is what too. I'm saying. Is that what you guys call it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a circular. That's what she said. Uh, it actually didn't grab me at first, Resident Evil 7. Uh, yeah. After the first hour or so, I was like, man, I don't, I don't, I don't know if this is uh, going to be for me. But as soon as uh, you play the boss fight in the garage yeah. and, oh, that, yeah. and he gets in that car yeah. and is doing donuts around you, I'm like, all right, this is insane. And then you get in the car and do the same thing. I, I love what, this. What really impressed me about that game is really um, funny. it's really funny. How how much of a of a just a Resident Evil game it is. I think yeah. people don't really expect that. And I was I was saying this on Up at Noon, but one of my favorite things about it is that for the first time ever, there is justification for why uh, the doors are completely insane. And it's because everyone in the house is insane. Like, back in the day, they'd be like, oh, it's the scorpion door. And you're like, why do you have a scorpion door in your house, yeah. dude? But now they're like, oh, we're crazy people. We put scorpions <laughs> all over our door because they're great. Sometimes you solve a puzzle and the character, who's like such a lame character, he knows he's, yeah. he's not compelling in any way, but sometimes he goes... Who designed this crap? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, he's. It's, it's, or sometimes love that. something crazy will happen and he's just silent. Yep. Yeah, yeah. He has nothing. It, he has no comments. That's a big problem with that game is the lead character. Yeah. As cheesy as Leon and Chris, everybody yeah. are. It's fun to have them as your lead character. Well, he does. He does stuff like he'll get almost like chainsaw and he'll be like, "Geez, what was that all about?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my favorite thing. I don't think this. This is not a spoiler. I'm just gonna say yeah. if you think this is a spoiler, it's ridiculous. But one of the one of the damage systems in the game is that you can get your limbs cut off. Oh yeah, and you just pick them up. If you first, you have to pick them up. Yep. So or you, you'll bleed you, out. You lose your leg, and you're on the ground, and your leg is like over there, and you have to like get your leg, and then when you do the heel thing, the guy holds his leg up to like the stump and like pours the fluid. That's over so it. insane. I don't even know why that's a thing. It should have been an instant death. So I actually <laughs> that so that happened to me funny. once, where the one, this guy who's chasing you uh, cut off my foot. <laughs> and I crawled over to it yeah. and grabbed my foot. And then I was like, how do I put this back onto my leg? And I'm yeah. just crawling around the floor holding this like yeah, dead foot. foot. And then it just said, like, you're dead. And I was yeah. like, what was I supposed to do there? It's insane. Yeah, so you, you can't trigger your health until you pick up your yeah. fallen limb. There's another part where, I mean, you just get your arm cut off. And you have to you can't progress in the game until you find it and all the crap on the ground. I mean, yeah. there are there herbs? Is it still yeah. Resident Evil stuff? Yeah, you yeah. mix you mix yeah. chemicals or strong chemicals with a green herb. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And you can also make bullets by mixing um, strong chemicals and gunpowder. Gun yeah. Yeah. You That's know. great. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Bullets. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> No, it's like there's uh, very video game parts of that. Oh, it's so parts. refreshing. It's yeah, like yeah. which it's, yeah, that it's doesn't matter. Not realistic. It's such a video game. Um, texture wise, it's probably like one of the best looking games ever made. Very pretty like, game. There's there's moments in that game on Xbox. Mm. Oh really? You playing on Xbox? Uh, playing on really? Sometimes the textures don't even pop in. It'll be like the like kind of filler. Like you know, there's like lots of photos on the wall and yeah. stuff. 
It'll be like that filler white with like a bunch of blurry lines. I'm like, oh, that's disappointing. And then it'll turn around like, ah, and it's all popped in. It's a g- 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 ghost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you done any VR? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, y- sparingly. Because <laughs> it's, like, it's, yeah. I love VR. I love horror games. I love Resident Evil 7. Doing all those things together is 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 a lot. Like it actually it trick it's it makes you feel like it's an experience you're actually having, which I'm like, that's a little too close for. It's comfort unpleasant. Right. What's happening to your character is unpleasant. Yes, and yes. it's not like video game unpleasant. It's like realistic. It's really violent. And like as I keep on telling to Damon, uh, there's people screaming at you all the time. Yeah. So it's not like you're walking around this house quietly and it's all scary. It's like you're walking. You're like. <laughs> Running from somebody around a house, just yep. constantly avoiding them while they're like shouting f bombs at well, you, it's, and just screaming. It's got that sort I don't of want alien that on my face. It's got that alien isolation feeling of like I have to sit behind this crate and not breathe because I feel like yeah. this person's gonna walk up and see me and stab me. Yeah. And in VR, like just standing, be I, like I I'll, like I stood behind like a wall for thirty minutes the other day, like. God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, oh my God. totally. And I'm like, what am I doing? And then I just like, I took the VR helmet off and ran down the hallway. But there's a cat guy. lady and she'll walk around the corner. It's not even like, oh, uh, I died. It's not even about that. It's about that she's like, ah! She's like, and what are you doing here? Yeah. Ah! And like, oh my God. She grabs your face yep. and she's yeah. like spitting. I think now like, that I've oh finished it, I'm going to go back and play it again in VR because now I'll, I'll, I have my, you know. That's I, what I'm I, saying. Yeah, you know I would only do it yeah. after I know. Because some of those boss fights too, you have to play them a lot to yeah. figure out what's going on. And they're so gory. Yeah. I do. I respect the hell out of Capcom for just like taking the training wheels off of VR on this one. It's not point and click teleport. It is a full on 3D first person VR game, and they just go, "Hey, deal with it." You know. But apparently, they solved the lurching um, motion sickness part of it a little bit by making it so you click around. In- yeah, it's an option, but you can actually just go full mm. 3D. Ooh, when is- I go full 3D, it, it kills me. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a lot of like moving, around, especially in, like those fight scenes. There's just a lot of like moving around. I can't around. imagine oh, yeah. going around those body bags in that one yeah. bo- boss fight. That'd be weird. Mm-hmm. But boss fights. Anyway, cool. the game's really yeah. fun. Just I'll play it with you. Yeah, I have a... Uh, it's just wacky and new, too. That's yeah, what I like about it. it, it it's so funny. Like, there was such a long period of my life where, like, a new Resident Evil game would have been to drop everything and play it. But I feel like I've just been burned enough yeah. that I'm just... Hearing good things is Seriously. totally enough yeah. to get me to play it. It just... I, I hesitated because I'm always kind of yeah, wary. No, I think mm-hmm. that's valid. Uh, in addition to uh, Resident Evil, I've also spent the last several weeks getting to know the Atari Lynx library. Ooh. Yeah, it's uh, the library is actually not that big. It's like 85 games, so it's wow. actually pretty doable. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've played through just about everything that was supposed to be even kind of good. Uh, did you buy that collection I linked you to? Yeah, yes, yeah, the entire uh, $3,500 <laughs> yeah, for reasonable. like every game in the box. Oh, uh, really? somebody, somebody amassed a nice Lynx collection that's on eBay right yeah. now, but that's it's not worth that. So be careful. Links to it. I have assembled my top five Atari Lynx games that I think are still fun to play today, All right. right now. And uh, the one caveat is, I was playing these games on my TV, and a, a lot of several, not a lot, but several Atari Lynx games were designed to be played with the system vertically. That's so crazy. Like Gauntlet. That's really ahead of its time. Uh, Raiden is like that, and Clax. Oh, so this wow. is excluding those games. So did you Gauntlet turn is the your re- TV sideways? Yep, I turned my 55 inch. <laughs> my top five that I think are still fun today. Number five, Ninja Gaiden. And this is a port of the uh, arcade version, which I like. I know Sam is. Uh, well, I not just think it's that game. it's not as in in depth of like platformy elephants and le- elements. <laughs> elephants. Platformy Platform elephants. Elements are, is a, it's elephants very dangerous. Is a really good game name. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. You just kind of run through it and slash stuff. It's fine. Well, it's it's slower than the NES games that people are familiar with, and you can move up and down in the field uh, like it, like in a TMNT or oh, X Men nice. Simpsons that sort of game. Uh, but I really like the graphics, and uh, it's it's got a really cool uh, continued screen where a big buzzsaw is coming down on Ree's chest. Yes. Uh, number four would be Zybots. That was a 1987 arcade game, yeah. 3D maze arcade game that they ported to the Lynx. That's pretty cool. You like move around in 3D and pick up items and shoot yeah, robots. Yeah, that's an Atari arcade like, game from a dark game. era. That's good. Zybots. Number three is Toki. Are you guys familiar with this? Yeah, game? you're a little little birdie. No, is that right? You oh, are. No, the caveman. <laughs> Well, no, you're like a jungle jungle tribe king, and the princess is kidnapped yeah. and turns you into either a monkey or a chimpanzee. It's a little unclear. And you can spit fire, okay. and it's an action platformer where you have to rescue the princess and get yourself turned back into a human. That sounds it's, awesome. It's actually crazy. Toki uh, is based on a true story. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't there a yeah. wasn't there a, a Wii or a Wii U version of Toki? Yeah, Toki Tori was that weird. Chip. Is that something else? Maybe that's Toki Tori. Tori yeah, I think that's, 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 that's what I was thinking of. But Toki did come to the NES. It poured the NES. Oh, so I've never seen that. Toki Toki Panic. And then Toki Panic. Yeah. So those Little, actually, <laughs> those first three games were arcade ports, but the top two games were 
uh, Atari Lynx originals that were ported to other platforms. Uh, number two would be Todd's Adventures in Slime World. Todd's <laughs> Adventures in Slime World. Starring Todd. Which is a <laughs> 1989 Metroidvania game. What? Yeah. Wow. Uh, so pre Super Metroid. What's Slime so World it's a, like? It's a Todd Vania like, now. So. <laughs> oh, in the games we were playing, we forgot to mention Damon and I played a lot of Booger Man last Friday. We did play a lot of Booger Man, yeah. That's what we've been playing. It was disappointing. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Uh, no, Todd's mentioned the slime oh. was really cool. It's a 2D Metroidvania game where you like explore these caves, fight slimes, uh, collect treasure, and you could you could link eight lynxes together for eight player cooperative play. Wow! wow. You guys realize that, that if really that's before time. Castlevania do, doing that, if it's yeah. before Simon's Quest, at least before well, Simon, that we, should be after we should really Simon's be calling Quest. these Metrod games. Yeah, yeah. Metrod <laughs> or Todd's <laughs> Todd'sylvania. Met, or just have all three, yeah. Uh, yeah. Metroidvania. Yeah. Damon, do you remember the original commercial for the Atari Lynx? Oh, I don't know if I remember. Did it have was a cat in it? No, it was like two. It was like two boys go into a. Bear with me here. Two boys <laughs> go into a, a like a, a public school restroom, and they're sitting on the toilet playing what? that surfing game on the Lynx. And there's a cable connecting the two from stall to stall, so they can poop and pee. Is this a print ad or like a? No, it's a video. This All is right, an actual commercial. Why, we need to look this up on YouTube. Um, and they're actually playing with each other, and it's showing off that like you can connect a bunch of these together and do multiplayer. Let's recreate well, it in the IGN bathroom. With sure. Todd's Adventures in Slime World. Uh, and the number one will be Chips Challenge, which was a Lynx launch title that they later ported to Windows and Macintosh computers and was actually a big hit in the mid-'90s. Uh, Scoop, wow. uh, that game was also ported to NES and never came out. Mm, yeah, I remember there was like, and there was a ROM for it yeah. uh, as part of uh, Frank Sifaldi's Lost Levels. Uh, wow, Ooh, cool. This, yeah. The synopsis the synopsis of Chip's challenge reads: High school nerd Chip McCallahan has met Melinda the Mental Marvel in the school science laboratory and must navigate through Melinda's clubhouse, a series of increasingly difficult puzzles, in order to prove himself and gain membership to the very exclusive Bitbuster Club. Wow, Melinda sounds like an insane person. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of game is it? I, people top love down, this game. Like it, it's like a highly recommended. It's like a top down PC like, game. action puzzle game. the The objective in every maze is the same: collect enough chips to unlock the exit but then there's like different types of enemies micro chips or potato yeah, chips like micro chips or like chips ahoy but yeah. the main character is also named chip yep. chips yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Is that cannibalism? It's, fun. it's a totally it, fun game. Totally give it up to the Atari Lynx for giving games to boring ass dude names like Todd and Chip. <laughs> it's uh, great. Wow. Yeah, I don't think I've ever played even one second Dude, of any Atari Lynx thing. It's yeah, if only really the Lynx cool. had third party support, it'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> if they had FIFA 18. It's got a really cool look to it. Uh, I, I really like the looks and the sounds of the Atari yeah. Lynx. It's, a, it's definitely unique. It really does feel like it's so far ahead of its time. That's that's crazy. Those games are fun to play. I can't play. believe there's vertical games on the Lynx. I, that's I know, yeah, that's, that's a fact to me. Gauntlet is one of them. Well, even linking together that many systems, that's just... That's yeah. Uh, all right, it's time for Video Game 20 questions. Yes. And our suggestion this week comes from Andrew E. And before we from get New to- York. <laughs> before we get to the game, he has, a, he has a question here. He says, he wants to know, what are some good story-based action games on PS4? Oh, man, definitely Todd's Adventures. <laughs> and he said... Gravity Rush 2. He says, I'm yeah. not allowed to play many M-rated games, so some T or under games would be amazing. Gravity Rush 2. Believe it or not, uh, yeah, that is one of them. But believe it or not, the only other one I can really think of is Uncharted 4. Ratchet and yeah. Clank. Yeah. Ratchet, and Ratchet, and Ratchet and Clank is what I was going to say. I was just yeah. don't know if that counts as a story-based oh. action game. Well, that's true, yeah. Like Uncharted Four obviously counts. What what is that rated? T. Is it a T? Or am I am I wrong about it's Uncharted? M, a lot of people die in that oh, game. Yeah. Maybe maybe that doesn't even count. I maybe mean, the Gravity Rush Two is the only one we can come I mean, up with. I, I don't know how strict he is in the action. Uh, I really think the Telltale games are worth it. Um, like Tales from I mean, Borderlands. Yeah, I just not. I, just, I don't think they're action games. Yeah, they have, they have the cool like. I wanted to point out it's actually hard, hard to come up with story based. T yeah. ba- rated, rated yeah. story based action games on PS4. Uh, and then, so that's a niche that I mean, somebody, Rise some developer, Final enterprising young developer. Yeah, Final Fantasy yeah. 15 is actually a really good one. Uh, yeah, I guess it means an RPG. In Rise action RPG. Raider, it's it's uh, you can on play the, it as definitely an on the action side for, you can play for RPGs, which is yeah, good. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Final Fantasy 15 is actually a really good recommendation. Uh, anyway, Andrew E also provides our game for 20 questions this week. Let the questioning begin. Chips challenge. <laughs> Um, you guys want to start? Yeah, is this a game that came out before the year 2000, January 1st? No. Why do you even have me on this show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it? Is this game exclusive to 
PlayStation. No. Wow, you just went for it. <laughs> wow. When uh, Justin's not here, I've, oh, no. there's no God. <laughs> We're never getting this one. <laughs> Can you see your character's hands? <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. This is how you guys do it. You do it. Narrow it down. Get in from the uh, top. Is this um, from the uh, current console generation? No. Is the developer of this game still in business? Yes. It, is it a Japanese game? Yes. This okay, game so ever got sequels? Did this game get sequels? No. Is it from the one previous console generation? Yes. Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Wii. But okay, so let's let's PlayStation exclusive. Let's pause. Yeah. Let's pause real quick. All right. So it's a game where you can see your hands. It's Japanese. It never got sequels. Uh, Still a business developer. It's not exclusive to one platform. Well, it's not exclusive to PlayStation. We okay. haven't asked about Nintendo or Microsoft. Ooh, you screwed that up. Uh, yeah, I, I phrased about it. Yes. All right. Well, should I ask about Nintendo now? No. <laughs> that's well, no, because like if, if it's not Nintendo, then that gives us a much third party. Well, far, that's I like mean, if I had asked, can you see your fingers in this game? <laughs> <laughs> is this multi-platform is what we want to ask next, right? No. Oh. Uh, see. If, now what do we know? So it's either a 360. So it's a weird Japanese. It's weird that it would be a Japanese game on 360. So it sounds like it's Nintendo. There was only like a couple games. But on. it could be. Could yeah, be Blue, Dragon. Blue Dragon. You can see that hands in that game. Eternal Sonata. Yeah. <laughs> good point, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. You can see a dragon's hands in that game. Well, should, I, should I ask about Nintendo then? Should I just wait so, for so wait, so it's either a 360 or a Wii game? We don't even or, know. Or a PS2 PC. game or a PS3 game, just not exclusive to PS3. Oh. We don't even Real know if pickle it's we got ourselves in. We don't even know voice. if it's a console game. No, we don't. You really screwed this one up. <laughs> no, <laughs> why, why did I screw it up? Can you see his thumbs? <laughs> and and you said it's the generation of Wii 360 PS3. Yes. Yeah. It's not PS3 exclusive. And and it's Japanese. But we don't it could still be a cross platform yeah, game on be. that generation. Yeah. Is this And a, they're still in business and there weren't secrets. Or did we narrow that down? Wait, you didn't ask if this is, was a multi platform game? No, we said it's on PlayStation. And then no, no, we did. I thought you did. Oh, yeah, I did. did. Yeah, you said okay. it's on said it, not multi platform. It is yeah. not a multi platform. Oh, um, let's just let's just do 360 or Wii. Let's just figure out what it's okay. on. Should we ask? Should I say, is it Nintendo? Yeah, game? go ahead. Is it a Nintendo game? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's, that's ten. Yeah. That's so it's awesome. a Wii exclusive. We're Wii exclusive game. Yeah, made <laughs> where you can see your hands. Yeah, <laughs> and we're done. Well, <laughs> and no, it never got sequels. We didn't narrow down if it was DS or not either, but. Let's just assume it's Wii at this point. Yeah. And uh, when you said is a Nintendo game, you, you meant published by Nintendo. I mean, he's not going to tell you that. Um, no, no, but I, I'm, which did you ask? I said, is it a Nintendo game? Yeah. Damn so it, that, that means to me. I it's said yes, but what was I really answering? What question was I really answering? It's a Nintendo game. Okay. It's, it's like a game from, so, the, it's a game from Nintendo. Yeah, okay. And that, that's so, that means. Yes, there are like really weird exceptions, but in general, Nintendo tends to develop and publish. You know, there are very and few like second parties. So games. it didn't have a sequel, so that's significant. All right, so yeah. let's let's think of it's a Blue Ocean ex game, or? exclusive game. No, there was a sequel to that game. Yeah, that's right. Endless Ocean had a sequel. It also wasn't made by Nintendo. Yeah, it was. I think it was a third party, and they just exclusively published. That's it. an that's a Nintendo. Game. Well, they published that it. counts as a Nintendo game. Endless Ocean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What about um? There's a weird Wario game. Got there sequels was, though. Zack and Wiki was somebody else, right? Capcom. Capcom, yeah. Um, there's Excite Bots, but that got mm -hmm. Excite Truck. Mm -hmm. um, we play. Uh, I don't know if you see your hands in that. Game. Yeah, that's really clever. <laughs> we play. Yeah, we play is not a like we play or we sports is a pretty. Oh, like that. we sports got a sequel. We could ask if it's oh, this yeah. game was focused on motion controls to narrow it down a little bit. Yeah. Should we do, should we that? do that? No, we you don't want it. Do. No, All right, is this a game that was focused on motion controls? Yes. So we music maybe. Or we we music or we play, yeah. That's not really hands, those. Those are like balls that you have on your arms. No, but those are hands. It's, a, no, it's an artistic really interpretation handy. of hands. Not that handy. <laughs> because of the me, the, the me spheres, yeah. is that you're saying? Yeah. I mean, these are hands. The me tooks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just coined that. I should have coined that 10 years ago. Are, are the main characters me's? Yes. <laughs> It's right. music. It's so it could be music, music or, or we, we, we Sports got a sequel. We play, you don't really see those hands, though. <laughs> this is what I'm telling you. That's isn't why there, this is an important question. Mm, I think you just see the paddles. Do you play music in this game? Yes. All right. Is it Wii Music? Yes. yes! <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's why 
you ask, yeah, you see the Mies hands, but then you ask, you know, oh, if I asked if they, can I see their fingers? The answer would have been no. So what is it? Okay, what about you? <laughs> Damn it. All right. Well, we wow, did. Wow, you guys, I did not, I was not sure if you guys would get Wii music. <laughs> Man. I thought, I thought that game would, I almost. I'm, I think you guys really nailed that one. That sometimes I think question. that game has been lost to time. No one ever talks about well, Wii except music. Except that the dude, the dude from the press conference stage Robbie performed at the inauguration. <laughs> yeah. So like, he's yeah. still around. Yeah. It he just became relevant again. Trump's inauguration. Yeah. 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 You, Is it Robbie Drums? Robbie Drums. Robbie Drums. Do you remember that press conference and how unbelievably awkward it was oh yeah yeah and like when yeah. like they're playing like the mario theme oh, on the flute times. or whatever oh. yeah that was when i realized the wii was just yeah so has Dr. anyone Damon? Nope. has anyone Dr. here Damon. ever nope. Nope. played wii music nope oh yeah i've never yeah had. like at e3 and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah i mean damon you and i both have albums that we produce music Wii music was insufferably bad. Yeah, it was so like, did bad. Did you try the the drumming with yeah, the with the with, with, the, with the balance board? With the balance board. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. So you actually tap on this thing and then you're like this in the air with motion. <laughs> and like it's I not mean, working. It doesn't it, work it at all. Like the like like rubbing your stomach and patting your yeah. head. That's like how it felt. Just, yeah. yeah. And it was the same year in which like rock band was the biggest thing. It was on 2008. Earth. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. <laughs> wow. God, that just and the, all the MIDI sounds. There was that weird awful mascot in that game who's just like. <laughs> it's so bad. It's a really, really very bad game. You think it sold well? We no, I don't even think it sold that well. I don't think it's. I bad. bet it did. I bet you. It didn't honestly, get a sequel. I think games that sold badly on Wii are still probably marketably yeah, above yeah, most probably other systems. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a stain on we know on, Shigeru- on the trousers of Mario. This this walks back everything I said about the best studio in the world. <laughs> yeah, Zelda. it turns out the Wii Music Team is making Breath of the Wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously, because Shigeru Miyamoto is a banjo player and he's a good yeah. musician and he yeah, likes yeah. music. He loves a lot. music. It's yeah. a, that's why he wanted to make this uh, game. It was really cool seeing him play on Fallon recently. Like he played with the Roots. Oh, I didn't see him. But what, they, what song did they play? Like the Mario, like the Mario theme. theme. Yeah, yeah, it was really cute. But he played guitar in that. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. And he, he did. Vo- Turns out he's like a killer opera voice. No, that's not true. That'd be cool. Yeah, we music. <laughs> yeah, two thousand and eight. Nice. Just you wait can till. see the hands. <laughs> <laughs> see the- that's why I laughed at you. See those meatballs. Could you? Yeah, I wonder if I can't picture seeing hands in that game. So you, you really, you know, the weeds. It's just the weeds. Just have floating balls. They yeah, have floating really? balls. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, not they're attached just, to their torsos. They're like Rayman. And then you have they're holding like a drumstick, and it's just like jittering all over. <laughs> yeah, the place. I guess you guys are right. Yeah, it's always it's a ball they, holding they don't a stick. Or legs either. No, and they can't eat. They, are you sure they're, they're just like they don't have arms? No, they're they definitely have legs. Sometimes they have oh, arms. No, sometimes they, sometimes they have arms, and it's weird as hell. Like in some yeah. re- Wii Sports Resort yeah. games, like sometimes they have, like, they have and like legs. the Mii Fighter and Smash Brothers and stuff. Like they have hands. Yeah. Well, you know they what? upgraded they the Mii's at one point. That's right. That's right. That's true. Yeah. You know why some of them don't have arms, right? Mii fencing because they're playing. They got, they got Resident Evil. <laughs> well, you need to pick up your your limb if you're. Yeah. <laughs> Look forward to Switch music uh, coming soon. <laughs> Hope not. All right, that's all the scoops that we have for you this week. Remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Sam. My name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop, and we're out.